Hello everyone, myself Dr. Triparna Saha. And on this playlist that is on lectures on pattern recognition, so far we have covered up to the basics of Bayesian Decision Theory. Today we will extend our knowledge and go deeper into that. So in this particular Bayesian Decision Theory, we have covered up to the features part, that's what are the features for a uh, two class uh, fee classification problem. So that we have covered so far. Next, we have a different concept that is the class conditional density or likelihood. The class conditional probability density function is the probability density function for X. That is one particular feature. The example could be likeness value of P bar and Palmon, given that the state of nature is W. That is, you already know that which class that particular fish belongs. So, you already know that class or the state of nature of that particular fish. Now, you are calculating the class conditional probability density function for any particular feature. The feature can be lightness or the other features that is the length and width can also be there. So that is probability of X given that W value that is the class conditional density or likelihood. So if you just draw the picture it would be something like that. While along the X axis there will be the feature value and along the Y axis it is the probability of that feature given that particular WI that is the thing and the, the curve can be something look like that. That is the likelihood. Now, before going into the much deeper of the decision theory, let us recapitulate certain terms. You are already familiar with this particular equation where the first term, this particular term, it is known as joint probability. That is probability of A comma B. So, that means joint probability. And this particular term, that is the conditional probability. So, what is the joint probability? That is, what is the probability that the event A and B will occur simultaneously or at the same time? So, that was the joint probability. And conditional probability means A is the event we want the probability of. And B is the new evidence that is related to A in some way. That is, you already know that now, at that point of time, you are calculating the probability of A. That is, what could be the probability that A event will occur given that B event has already been occurred. So, that is the concept of joint probability and conditional probability. So, having said that, now let us go to the posterior probability. So, posterior probability is the probability of a certain state of nature given our observable. That is the probability of W, that is the state of nature, given our observables. What are our observables? The features that we have calculated, that is our observation, right? So, given one particular feature A. So, what is the probability of W or one particular class given one particular A? Now, that you need to calculate. So, this particular value over here, you can calculate from this particular equation. Where probability of X given the W even has been occurred multiplied by probability of W divided by probability of X. And this particular thing is coming from using this particular equation. This probability of this equation from where you are getting this particular equation from here. That is the joint probability equation that from here you have that particular equation. Right. So from this particular equation. What you are trying to find out? You are trying to find out this particular value. So, as you are trying to find out this particular value over here, so this value you have to find out. So, this value will be this value divided by this value, right? So, that we have written over here. So, that is the thing. So now, this particular thing, what you can write over here, this 
that comes that is probability of x is equal to prob summation of all i that is i is the number of uh, in a class it could be so i value will be 1 to c that we have already covered in the previous lecture probability of a with prior occurrence of wi into multiplication with probability of wi by this the probability of a is equal that is the calculation of posterior probability now let us move to the next so that is the value of posterior probability can be that is for a particular case when probability of w1 that is the probability of one particular state first class that is the probability of that occurrence will be the unknown of this belongs to the first class of the fish that is the two third and probability of w2 is one third then the posterior that is probability of wy with a prior occurrence of x that is this particular thing if it is represented along the y axis while the x axis remains the x that particular curve that we have already shown in the previous slide that is this particular thing that was for the likelihood now for that scenario this will be the posterior probability curve okay now next topic we have log function a log function states exactly how costly each action is as earlier we have c classes that is w1 up, up to wc so we also have a possible action that is alpha 1 up to alpha a that is a possible action this get could be that is c is the classes number of classes and a is the possible action that is this value for the number of classes this value is for the number of actions then the log function is lambda of alpha i with the prior occurrence of wj is the log incurred for taking action alpha i when the class is wj this is the thing okay that is the calculation of log function now what is the zero one loss function and same thing this particular thing we are going to calculate this this becomes this so this will be zero when i equal to j and this will be one for when i not equal to j that is a zero one loss function and this i and j can be any value between one to c okay so zero law one loss function assign no loss to a correct decision and uniform unit loss to an incorrect decision <coughs> pardon me so um, there will be no loss if a correct decision is taken that is if i equal to j and there will be a uniform unit loss that is the value will be 1 when a incorrect decision that is i when not equal to j that is this particular function now another function is that discriminant function discriminant functions are a useful way of representing pattern classifiers let's say gix is a discriminant function for the ith class this classifier will assign a class wi to a feature vector a if gix is greater than g j x where that is for all j not equal to r equivalently this value will be the argument of max i g i x where we have to decide this particular thing that is the state of the nature or the class of the particular state that is the discriminant function so the, what is the discriminant as a network we can view the discriminant classifier as a network for c classes and a c dimensional input vector so these are the inputs we have the calculated features x are the calculated features how many features we are calculating we are calculating d number of features so x value from 1 to x d this number of features we are calculating from these what are the discriminant functions discriminant functions are these 
that has already been represented over here, right? And I value will be from 1 to 6. So I value is 1 to 6. That is D1x, D2x up to D3x. And here the so cost value will be there. And based on the display functions, action or classification will be done. So this is the discriminant as a network where the inputs are the feature values calculated. Now this will be the visualization of the discriminant. From here you can visualize what could the discriminant look like. Okay. So this is a 3D view of that. So up to this we have covered about the Bayesian decent theory. From next lecture we are going to look into the Bayesian network. So thank you everyone for watching this particular video and happy studying.